last game, their turnover margin was 24 to 13. And this is something that the team is going to have to get control of over today. A key player for Penn State that I will be keeping my eye on today. Hudson Bone for Stony Brook. Renz Colon. Conlon takes up possession and then wins the draw and will cycle it in for the Seawolves. And just again, near side, Frasio not able to, uh, to, uh, to hug the post there and a great cut as well by, by Sean Carlo, able to break down and put it right into the back of the net. So Stony Brook takes possession once more, just dominating in the circle. So, so there is a huge reason why Stony Brook is able to keep scoring those goals and creating those big time opportunities for themselves. That's exactly right, Tim, and just once more they gain possession here. As Renz Cologne is dominating in the circle so far as he's still with it on the near side. Cologne looking to get it in the hands of Polinetti. His pass unsuccessful and Penn State will look to head the other way. It's Sam Sweeney with it now. Sweeney with the pass up the field. Now will be the face-off man for Penn State. Chase Mullins, the transfer from North Carolina, working in the face-off for Penn State. And trying to gain possession here is Mullins, still fighting for it. And that ball pops free, and the two teams still battling for it, and possession is regained by the Nittany Lions in Kyle Aldridge. Aldridge with it now, working on the far side. Gets pressured by two defenders, but Penn State will keep with it. Auckland. Ethan Long's second goal of the season, TJ Malone's fourth assist of the season. Now Penn State will take two up last year at all for the Nittany Lions due to an injury, but boy has he been special this year. Just a dominant player so far on the campaign, as you were saying, Tim. And I mean, he also brings that leadership that you want to see as well from, from, from a, a, a veteran attackman, if you will, somebody that you know is going to be able to get the points for you. Now Penn State gains possession now. After they made the switch to Mullins, Tim, really gaining possession now and playing well offensively. Yeah. 4-3 here. And, Tim, Stony Brook had all the momentum in the first three minutes of the game, but it's completely shifted in Penn State's favor. You know, uh, I'm very curious to see if Stony Brook maybe wants to change up their faceoff dot too, because that is right now where this game is being won and lost. I, I mean, Stony Brook has not really seen possession besides that man up opportunity, and they were not able to move the ball around really at all. Well, Stony Brook gains possession here after that, but quickly loses it as Penn State takes over and will look to add to its advantage. It's Aldridge with it now, dumping. That was assisted by Matt Anderson, his second of the season. Armitage's second goal of the season. It was a much needed goal here as things are even with just 2.23 remaining. Penn State will look to come away with possession and they do. Trying to regain their advantage. Now it's Grant Haas with it. It's Michigan in overtime in a 9-8 victory for the Nittany Lions and right there just showing, once again showing off that goal scoring ability as Penn State leads 5-4. So Nittany Lions gain possession off the draw in the hands of Jack Posey who gets it back to his goalie and Jack Frasion. Great work there by Jack Posey to make sure his team was able to get possession there, didn't leave the box there. And an incredible finish and a huge goal for Penn State just seconds before. Definitely a huge goal there by Jack Trainer working on Dan Newton as Stony Brook with a quick chance, but another huge save by Jack Frasione and two massive saves to end the first period as Penn 6-4 over the Stony Brook Seawolves here at Panzer Stadium as we are just about to get set here in period number two and Stony Brook making a change on the faceoff circle. Robbie Smith, the senior, getting the work now after Renz Cologne was struggling, but now Stony Brook will take over. Looks like it paid off. Or in the contest, had a goal against Rutgers, now up to three on the campaign. In the faceoff, as you were mentioning, Tim, it's Penn State coming away with it. A big possession boost for the Nittany Lions. Great win there by Chase Mullins. He won that one clean. A huge problem for not just McLaughlin, but for keepers all around the NCAA, as well as the PLL. So great work there by Jack Trainer and a, what a finish there for Kevin Winkoff to get his second of the season. Kevin Winkoff, the grad student, and as Tim mentioned, his second goal of the season, that's Jack Trainer's That possession in their own zone, take their time, draw the double, which is really what 
is causing Stony Brook to leave so many men open right now is guys like Jack Trainer, guys like Kevin Winkoff in that situation able to draw the double and create huge opportunities for Penn State. Kevin Winkoff nets his third assist of the season. Goals by Stony Brook, and then all of a sudden Penn State changed up the faceoff dot, but they started playing their style of play, which is give the ball to your, to your attack. I mean, the attack really run this team. It looks like they're an early faceoff violation. Not sure I agree with that one, but nonetheless, a huge opportunity for Stony Brook. This is a much needed opportunity for Stony Brook, like you mentioned, Tim. Penn State just seems to be running away with it here. Matt Anderson's first goal today, he had three against Rutgers, had 25 goals last year, was named to the second team All-America East, one of Stony Brook's top players, and big time players make big time plays, Tim, and Matt Anderson, that goal could be a huge momentum boost for the Seawolves. Just cycling it around, making sure they get the right shot and a great feed from Dylan Polinetti over to Armitage and he made no mistake. And now after Penn State was up by four, they just lead by two. The Nittany Lions will try and take possession here and they are successful. Now it's Chris Jordan with it, working on that near side. Nittany Lions, big time goal for Matt Trainer to kind of maybe stop the bleeding, if you will. It's Matt Trainer's sixth goal of the season and after Jack Trainer had three assists and a goal, Matt Trainer wanted to get on the score sheet and did so there as Penn State looking to gain possession, and they do so after it was well as Chris Jordan. Great cut there by TJ Malone working on his defender Ben Morshauser. Malone made no mistake as Penn State leads 11 to seven with now just three minutes remaining here in period number two as Stony Brook gets possession on the draw. It's Renz Cologne. Now, now something to take note of there is that was actually Bone on there on the face-off draw today. Not really ideal for him, but good job by uh, head coach uh, for Penn State, Jeff Tambroni, to make that change right away. And it's Renz Cologne winning the face-off for Stony Brook. Just how the first half of play began. The second half of play also starts with Stony Brook in possession. Penn State absolutely straight towards the cage, coming towards us, and then that dishes it down low to X to TJ Malone and TJ Malone able to find Kevin Winkoff, who absolutely rips that one home. Kevin Winkoff, his third goal of the season. Second today, TJ Malone's second assist on the day, fifth of the season, and Penn State taking advantage of the turnover by Stony Brook. Stony Brook, though, looking to answer back a big face-off win for them here. Now into the bottom corner to beat Jack Frasione there. Will Button had just three goals last season, nearly matches that total today as he's up to two. Another face-off win here for Stony Brook as well. Really changed things up at halftime. Coming near side, letting it easy for Will Button to take his speed, take his time, and absolutely place that into the bottom corner to beat Jack Frasione there. Will Button had just three goals last season, nearly matches that total today as he's up to two. Another face-off win here for Stony Brook as well. Really changed things up at halftime. Yeah, Tim, and if you're Stony Brook's coach, what did you say at halftime to sort of gain possession and work on your face-off guys? Because possession is key. Well, there's no question that face-offs have been a huge part of this game. So you have to let them know that you don't have to win it clean. But the way that he was able to hold on to that, take his time, reset, a little bit of a crow hop there into the rip to get the full power behind it is absolutely impressive and huge for Luke Mercer to get his first of the season. That's exactly right. First of the season, first of the day for Mercer. Stony Brook will look to respond back. It's in the hands of today by Jamison McLaughlin. Stony Brook is making a change in net as it's Nick Scucciarini, the junior goalie, taking over after 14 goals allowed by Jamison McLaughlin. And Tim, this is a McLaughlin made 23 saves last week, and that's the most in the NCAA this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and he played great against Rutgers. He's really kept him in that game, but something is just that one home. And the huge for Stony Brook to get a goal there. Well, after that goal, Jack Frasione just looked at himself <coughs> in disgust, taking a while for him to get out of his crouch position, but he's gonna have to bounce back in this contest if Penn State still wants to keep its five-goal lead. 
Absolutely, but Penn State's really going to have to start figuring some stuff out here. On the faceoff dot, once again, I don't, still do not think they have won one yet. Penn State so far in this contest. Yeah, absolutely. You know, even with their struggles in the, in the faceoff dot this second half, you look at the possession, you look at the chances, you look at the opportunities, it just screams Penn State right now. And, you know, Stony Brook is still right within this game, but they're going to need a lot to go their way to take down the Nittany Lions. Stony goals all of last year, now has three goals against Penn State today. Safe to say his 2023 season starting off a lot better than his 2022 campaign. Penn State, though, will get the face up here off of a face there in the support, if you will. And how about that pass by Matt Trainer to five fourth of the game? Just great ball movement there by Penn State. The pass from Matt Trainer. It's really been just a clinic put on by the Trainer brothers and TJ Malone. Jack Trainer, two goals, two assists. Matt Trainer had a goal earlier in this game. That's his first assist. And as we mentioned, TJ Malone with four. But Stony Brook on the other end with a chance. Terence Cologne, but Jack Frasione answers the. Looks like they are going to call it a man up goal. Just with one second left on the man up. Huge, huge for Stony Brook. And this game's not over. It's Jonathan Huber's first goal of the year and first as a Seawolf as a grad transfer from St. John's. And he was dominant at St. John's as Penn State takes possession off the faceoff. But 40 goals in his senior season at St. John's. Just throws that over his head, skips right past McLaughlin. And what an amazing goal there. It, and, it, you know, it wasn't even just DeSanto. He had Newton right on him as well. Sabella was right next to him, too. He is just surrounded by three Stony Brook defenders. Gets the shot off. And not only does he get the shot off, but it ends up in the back of the net as Asio kind of almost looking like he was trying to shoulder it a little bit. Not maybe using his stick properly there. But nonetheless, Stony Brook is right back in this one with plenty of time left in 544. Polinetti led the Seawolves in goals last year with 34 and just scored a massive one right there for the Seawolves. They take possession once more after the faceoff. Blake Bates.